This video today is brought to you by Toner. Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films. If you're new to my channel, I make tutorials and stream video games. And today I'm going to go over a video editing plugin called Grade Color Curves inside Vegas Pro 17. Now you may notice that I probably sound a little different. That's because I'm using a different microphone because there's construction going on outside my house and I don't want that to be picked up in this video. So I'm using my Shure SM58 on this new toner stand that I have. This stand is really awesome and it looks like a bunch of those other stands that come on Amazon, but it's been upgraded. I like the brand toner and I have a lot of toner equipment and this microphone stands brand new by them. They just released it. It's similar to a lot of other microphone stands, but it has a few key features that makes it a little bit different and better. The first major feature is the base it has. It has a base with a giant cushioned clamp that goes on your desk, unlike those other cheapy ones that are just metal little lips that go on there. This has a nice strong thick piece of metal that goes under your desk and actually forms a hook for your headphones. The microphone stand actually sits inside this base and freely rotates, but you'll notice that the base actually has three metal parts instead of the average two metal parts, making it more sturdy. It also comes with this big nice pop filter, and at the end here it has a microphone holder, but if you don't have a microphone like that, you can twist that off and use its adapters that it comes with to put on almost any microphone. It's a really nice stand that's made by a reliable company that I have a lot of products of already, so if you want to pick this up, you can find a link in the description below. I believe it's on sale by the time this video is being made, so I'd definitely go ahead and pick that up if you don't already have one of these already. So without further ado, let's jump right into Vegas. All right, so we're in Vegas 17 right now. I went ahead and drag and dropped a clip in here that I'm gonna use for example purposes explaining the plugin. If you find gray color curves in your video effects and you select it, you're gonna see a bunch of presets created by the developer. We're not gonna use these, we're gonna use the default and I'm gonna show you all the different things this plugin has to offer. So I'm going to drag the default onto my video clip and we'll see the gray color curves window. And let's go ahead and take a look and examine this real fast. So on the bottom, we're going to see some options and some are enabled and some are disabled. Let's talk about those real fast. We'll see that the brightness, red, green, and blue have toggle buttons. And if we select them, it gets rid of them out of our view entirely. So if we just want the blue curve, we can do that. If we just want the blue and red, we can do that and so on. Over to the right, we see this button, which has overlay curve. If we select that, all of our curves get stacked into one, which some people like that more. The button to the right of that is the fixed aspect ratio. If it's enabled, you're going to see a perfect square for your grids. If it's disabled, you're going to see them stretched across however long this plugin's window is. So I'm going to put it back to square. To the right of that, we'll see 8-bit units. And when this is enabled, the units in your curve turn to point values from X and Y. If it's disabled, they turn to percentages. To the right of that, we have snap to grid. If you enable that, you'll notice that the point is snapping to certain parts in the grid. And if you disable it, you'll notice you can put this point anywhere you want at a much finer detail. To the right of that, we have lock movement. So if you have that enabled, you can only move this up and down or left and right, depending on which way you move your mouse when you grab the point. Next over here, we have pick color. This is an extremely useful part of this plugin. If you select it, you can select the color of anything on your screen. It doesn't have to be on your preview, it can be this gray. And if you select it, you can select multiple colors. I want to make this blue. It's super useful when you're trying to pick out specific colors to change. The one to the right of that is a little bit more broad. You can pick a color range instead of one single point. So let's say I want to change my skin tones. That's not just one specific color, that's an actual range. So if I reset this curve and I select this one and then go ahead and select my forehead, it's going to select every point where my forehead is. And I can adjust these accordingly. Of course, this isn't going to be done here in this specific curve, but that's an example. So bringing us to the curved menu, you can left click and drag points around. You can select multiple clips at once. Control commands work like control A, control C, control V. And if you right click, you have your control commands. And then down here, you have reset curves and default view. So if you made a lot of mess ups right here, you just want to start over. You can right click and hit reset curves. If you scroll in and out, you can zoom in and out of the grid itself into specific points. If you want to bring that back to normal, you can right click and hit default view. And lastly, if you click and hold the middle button, you can drag this grid around. Now, as I move my mouse on this grid, you'll see in the right hand side that it's going to have X points and Y points, or if you have 8 bit selected in the 0 to 255 range. If you have any points selected, you'll notice that options come up here on the left. This tells you where it is in relative to X and Y based on percentage or pixels. It has three different types of curves you can choose. By default, the smooth one is enabled. You can change it to linear, which makes it a completely straight line, or you can change it to manual, which brings these draggable arms right here. You can quickly enable and disable what you've done by clicking the checkbox right here. Now if I uncheck this, it'll bring back all my curves. And you can do that for individual ones. 
Now to the left here, we see Y RGB, which means this is the brightness RGB mode. If we switch over to this button, we have the hue, saturation, and brightness mode. Whichever one you have selected disables the other one. So if you want to make any customizations in HSY, you should just drag and drop another grade color curves on here and do that for HSY specifically. So that brings us to HSY. The HSY mode has nine different color curves and variations of this graph you can use. You can have multiple ones enabled at the bottom here or disable what you don't want. But if you have them all enabled, you see nine different graphs. We're going to go over these one at a time real quick. So I'm going to disable all these except for brightness. The very first one, brightness. Of course, standard, you can just adjust the brightness and contrast of this video. Nothing new there. If we go over to the next one, we have hue depending on brightness. So this means you could change certain colors depending on how bright they are. Right off the bat, the hue lines at the zero mark. And if you go down, it can go all the way to negative 180. And if you go up, it goes all the way to positive 180. And then left on the graph is the darkest parts of your video and right is the brightest parts. So we create a point in the middle and drag it up. You'll see that it's gonna be changing the colors all depending on the brightness. Next over here is saturation depending on brightness, and this one's actually extremely useful. When you're color grading and you want to desaturate shadows and things like that, you can do that by creating a couple points right here and then bringing this one down, making this one linear, and you can even make this one a manual curve, and then bring it up, and therefore you have desaturated all the things on the lower end of the spectrum. It's a really useful mode that really adds that bit of professionalism to your videos. Next, we're going to go to hue and everybody knows that you can just change the color of specific things. So this is really good for changing skin tones if you want to make sure you have correct skin tones. So I can unsquare this graph right here and then I can select the color range and then click and drag over my forehead. And it creates points on the graph of the color of my forehead. So I can add a couple more points at the end here and here and I can take these two points and then drag them up and down to change the color of my skin. Pretty cool, right? Next one to the right, we have brightness depending on hue. So basically here we can select colors on this video and brighten and lower them based on the color. So again, if I select my blue color range right here, add a couple more points, select these two, and then change the brightness and darkness of my blue shirt. Onward, we have saturation depending on the hue. So we can desaturate parts of the video based upon the color. So we select, let's say my blue shirt again. And then I add a couple more points right here. I can grab these two points and then completely desaturate it. And look, now I have a gray shirt. Over to the right of that, we have basic saturation. Everybody knows this. If you're a video editor, you can increase the strength of the colors and decrease them. So the right of that, we have brightness depending on saturation. So basically from left, we have 0% saturation. To the right, we have 100% saturation. And at the bottom of the graph, we have complete darkness. And at the top, we have complete brightness. So if I add a point in here, we can see that it will change the brightness depending on our saturation. And finally, we have hue depending on saturation. So depending on how saturated a point in this video is, we can change the color. So I pick my blue shirt right here. It adds a point where my blue is, and I can make a couple points around that and then drag it around based upon saturation of whatever color I selected. And those are all the features of gray color curves. Now let me go ahead and show you a real world example of when you'd use this. I'm gonna quickly color grade some footage using only this plugin. Okay, so I've added some footage into the timeline, and this is from my Superman launch tutorial. If you haven't seen that, I can put that in the card above to the top right. This footage was shot on my Lumix GH5S, and it's in 4K at 400 megabits per second in HLG color profile. HLG is hybrid log gamma, and it's really similar to V-Log, which basically those two color profiles capture a really wide dynamic range. The best way to color correct this type of footage is to convert it to a Rec. 709 format. So Panasonic creates their own specifically for V-Log and HLG. LG. By applying this LUT to this specific footage, it brings the color profile back to a normal, natural color profile that you can color grade. So I'm going to go to my LUTs and go down to my Vlog to Rec. 709 and drag it on here. The color is now normal and we can start grading. I'm going to go back to grade color curves and drag the default onto here. First thing I notice is that my face is a little bit bright. I don't want it to be past the 80% mark here, so I'm going to drag that brightness a little bit down. I'm going to do that by selecting my brightness, Control A to select both points changing them to manual, which gives them these little swing arms, and I'm going to drop this down a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. Next, if I wanted to add a mood to this, then I could do that by using these color curves over here. Let's say I want to make it kind of a gloomy mood. Then I could increase the blues and the highs and the lows of this video. So I'm going to go over here to my lock movement axis button, enable it, and I'm going to drag this blue up. That's going to really pump in some blues into the darks. I'm going to do the same thing with the access point to the right here, and I'm going to drag that left, and that's really going to pump blues into the brights. And you see it's kind of taken away from the color of my face. So I'm going to click in about the middle here, create a new point, and drag that to the middle. 
and that's going to bring some life back into my face, while still retaining the blues that I just added in the highlights and the shadows. Next I want to go to the HSY mode, but remember if I select that it's going to disable what's in the YRGB mode. So I'm going to drag and drop another preset of color grade on here, and here I'm going to go into the HSY mode. And now a couple things I want to do is make sure my skin tone is still perfectly on the 117 degree mark. So I'm going to do that by going into the pan crop tool and then zooming in on my forehead. Now that I've done that, I go over to my vector scope and see where this is at. And it looks like the 117 mark, which is where my mouse is, this is a little bit too red. So I'm going to drag and drop that down. In gray color curves, I'm going to go to the hue. I'm going to uncheck brightness because I don't need that one. I want to keep hue up and I'm also going to keep saturation depending on brightness. So right now I'm going to disable brightness versus saturation and saturation. So I just have hue up. Now here I'm going to take the color range tool and then drag it all around my forehead right here. And it just created my forehead range. I'm going to scroll in to zoom in a little bit. Create another couple points by double clicking. And I'm going to take and select just the middle two points and drag them up a little bit. And we can see that's dragging this down and making it a lot less red. Maybe I went a little too far, but we're just going to keep it right about here. I'm going to right click, bring it back to default view. Next, I'm going to click the saturation, open up that menu, go back to pan and crop, right click, restore it. So now we have this look, go back to gray color curves at the top. And what we're going to do is decrease the saturation just a little bit. I think my face is just a little too bright, so I'm going to drag that down a little bit. Selecting inside the saturation, control A to select both points. Use this button to change them to manual curves and I'm going to drag it down. That looks a lot better because I don't like my saturation to go too much past 40. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and enable saturation depending on brightness. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to crush the color out of the shadows that I pushed in. Remember on the blue curve, I pushed in some blues into the darkness. Well, I'm going to keep those blues there, but for the pure black parts like right here and around my eyes, I'm going to desaturate them to black. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, double click, make a couple points. Make this one a linear one so it's straight. Double click, make a couple more points because I want this line to be perfectly straight and the only part I want curved is this left hand side. So I'm going to select all these, right click, reset the nodes, that puts them back onto the line. I'm actually going to change these last two to the manual mode. I'm going to drag and drop this one all the way down to zero. Looks like I accidentally brought that one with me. I'm going to deselect, select this one, and bring it back up. I'm going to take this arm and then drag it outward. And I'm going to select this point and make it a linear point so it's straight. I'm also going to take this arm down here and then drag it outward. So basically on this scale, which is absolute blacks to absolute whites, anything that's this close to absolute blacks is going to get 100% desaturated. If I deselect it, you can see around my eyes and at the bottom left of the shadows losing color down there. So sometimes this is a little bit too harsh and you can round it off by dragging this up a little bit. And there you go. That's looking awesome. So let's see what it looked like originally. And then graded with just this plugin. Really good. And there you have it. You now know all about this awesome plugin and all the things it can do. It's super powerful, it has a lot of uses, and has a lot of awesome features that Vegas doesn't come with naturally. So if you're even remotely serious about color grading, then you should definitely pick this program up. If you use the link in the description below, you can get it on sale for a limited time, so I definitely recommend scooping that up as fast as possible. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there, because that'll really help me out. I'm trying to reach my goal of 20,000 subscribers, and I can do that with your help. So thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see y'all in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all of my subscribers up there at the top. Be sure to check out their channels for some awesome content. Thank you.